Hello and welcome to the episode 158 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today, we have the birth of NEMS, the continuation of the recording of You Know My Name, Look Up The Number, and two intercontinental flights. On the 7th of June 1961, the Beatles, with Pete Best on drums, performed once again at the Top Ten Club for their second and lengthiest residency in Hamburg, West Germany. In 1962, Brian Epstein and his brother Clive put down 100 pounds, about 2,150 pounds in 2020 money, needed to form NEMS Enterprise, the management company designed to accommodate the needs of the Beatles. Needless to say, the success of the lads would soon lead other local bands in the Epstein orbit. Jerry and the Pacemakers, Billy J. Kramer and the Dakotas, Cilla Black and others. After a day of rest on the 6th of June, the Roy Orbison package tour, de facto headed by the Beatles, resumed its course today, arriving at the Odeon Cinema in Glasgow. Allegedly, the Beatles took a liking to the rather enthusiastic and positively wild response of the local audience, and enjoyed this and the four subsequent performances they gave in the city throughout their career. Moving on one year to the 7th of June 1964, we find the Beatles, with Jimmy Nicol on drums, leaving Amsterdam in the morning to get to Hong Kong. The trip was broken by several stops, in London, for a connection flight, and in Zurich, Beirut, Karachi, Calcutta and Bangkok for refueling. Beatles fans were present at each of those airports, but the Beatles were too tired to even consider coming out of the plane, and left their press officer, Derek Taylor, with the sad task of breaking the news to their fans. The only exception was Bangkok, where the Fabs greeted a thousand teenage fans, mostly in school uniforms, after they started chanting Beatles come out. This doesn't mean the Beatles could rest during the flight. They still gave interviews to various members of the press. Fun fact, the band was accompanied by John Lennon's Aunt Mimi for the trip. And let me stop for a second to once again remind you to show me your love with likes, comments, donations and shares on social media. You might think it's not important, but love makes the world go round, as they say. It takes just a second of your time and it means that I will keep on creating and publish music-related content for you all. If in doubt, visit www.simonmas.com support to find out how you can contribute. Thank you! In 1967, the Beatles returned at the EMI Studios where, from 7pm to 2am, they kept on working on You Know My Name, Look Up The Number. The work included an unstructured jam session with guitar, drums, organ, tambourine and a flute played by one of the four. The whole thing was overdubbed not on take 10 of the song, deemed best during the previous session, but on take 9. This, and the nature of the material, caused some confusion in the archiving of the tape, with the box being labelled Instrumental, Unidentified. A remake of the song, producing takes 20 to 24, was produced by the end of the session, with George Harrison bringing home a rough mono mix of take 24, featuring a 20-minute jam. Finally, on the 7th of June 1968, we have a first. For the first time, a Beatle leaves UK while the recording of an album or a single was in progress. And it wasn't just one, but two of the fabs, George Harrison and Ringo Starr, left for the United States today so that George could make a guest appearance on Ravi Shankar's Raga documentary film. Some of the sessions were cancelled today's session, and then those of the 12th, the 13th and the 14th of June. But the work on the new album continued under the supervision of John Lennon and Paul McCartney. Raga would come out in 1971 with an accompanying soundtrack produced by Harrison. Well, 
I guess this ends today's episode of What A Fab Day. Tomorrow we'll look into more mid-career recording sessions for the Beatles. Tune in to learn more. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.